GarageBand 10.4.9 has landed, and while the App Store description says this is a stability and bug fix update, there's actually a lot more to it than that. There are some juicy features, fixes, and quality of life improvements in this update. Here are the main standouts. This isn't even mentioned in Apple's release notes, bizarrely, but GarageBand's UI has received a bit of a refresh in this new update. When opening a new project or creating a new track, the track selection window has been completely revamped. New icons, new layouts, and some of the terminology has changed too. Apple have finally decided to make things a lot easier for everyone by labelling software instrument tracks as MIDI tracks, for example. They've also switched the edit button from a pair of scissors to the same pencil icon found in Logic Pro. These changes extend to the Drummer Tracks library panel too. Where before we had a big old portrait of the currently selected drummer, that's now gone, leaving just the list of genres and drummers. You'll notice that when you create a new track or switch out the patch of an existing track, that the icon in that track's track header now defaults to the newer colour matched instrument icons. You can still access the older, more skeuomorphic like icons if you want, you just need to right click on the icon in the track header and select the one you want from the menu. Two new previously iOS only sound packs have been added to GarageBand for Mac in version 10. 8.4.9, 8-Bit Legends and Vox Melodics. The theme of the 8-Bit Legends pack is classic 80s coin-operated video games and the lo-fi nostalgic sounds of that era. That description will either really appeal to you or turn you off completely. But the sounds included in this pack are actually really usable in a variety of different genres. All of the instruments and loops here have a lovely, nostalgic vibe to them and are, in my opinion, some of Apple's best new sounds in a long time. Vox Melodics is very much aimed towards beatmakers. The blurb inside the iOS sound library entry itself even says so, and allows you to add either straight up clean vocal loops or heavily processed clips to your projects. A lot of these vocal loops come as part of a harmony that, when put together, can sound really nice. I've been looking for the right thing, so baby, tell me where you're hiding. I've been looking for the right thing So baby tell me where you're hiding I've been looking for the right thing So baby tell me where you're hiding It's great to see these packs finally land in GarageBand for Mac But come on Apple, is it really so difficult to release new sound packs at the same time on both iOS and Mac? I won't go through the rest of the release notes here one by one as I'll likely bore you to tears, but there are some specific standouts I want to bring to your attention. Opening plugins in Controls view is now a far more stable affair, with a couple of fixes being implemented here. 
I know most of you will never use Controls View for plugins, but for users who rely on VoiceOver to navigate the program, this is good news. There are also some fixes for some quite silly stuff. For example, the Show Hide Flex Time button no longer completely disables flex mode when clicked. And Follow Mode for the drummer now works with tracks that contain takes. A link to the full release notes down in the description below this video, but that's pretty much the big news for GarageBand version 10.4.9. Let me know your thoughts below, and if you could click that like button on the way past, I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to find out more about the included sounds in this new update, watch this next.